And now it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker this morning, our own beloved pastor, Reverend John Scott, to bring us another inspiring, enlightening, and uplifting message. So please put your hands together and warmly welcome Reverend John to the podium. Thank you, Jen, and morning, family. And if anybody is watching us on YouTube or tuned in on the World Wide Web, welcome. Put on your dark glasses because there is a blaze of light coming from the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful, and I might add warm, Jamaica in the Caribbean. Welcome. Today's encouragement celebrates all the people in our community who serve. And I have titled it, Blessed Be the Doers. And I'd like to start with a story by the 19th century American philosopher and essayist, Ralph Waldo Emerson. He was known as the Concord Sage. And as the story goes, he, Emerson, and a young boy were trying a very difficult task. And it was this, to get a young calf into a barn. Now, anybody who has ever tried to get a calf into a barn or any large animal to do something against its will will know that this is no small task. So the boy had a, had a rope around the calf's neck and he was tugging with all his might. And Emerson put his shoulder to the rump of the, of the calf and he was shoving with all his might. And of course, the calf wouldn't move. He maintained the status quo. So shortly after, an Irish maidservant came out on the, the porch of um, a neighbor's house, and she stood there watching this, this charade and laughing heartily to herself. And eventually she came over, and she, smiling at them, said good morning, and stuck her finger in the, the pail of milk and put her finger in the calf's mouth, and the animal followed her ever so meekly into the barn. No problem. Emerson became very quiet. And wiping the sweat from his brow, he made his way, the story goes, into his house and sat down at his um, desk and said, I love people who can do things. <laughs> and in Jamaica, my mother used to say, whenever Reverend Elmo gave a wonderful sermon, my mother would say, adat me aseto. <laughs> For those who do not speak the Jamaican patwa, that means I'm saying the very same thing. I'm in, in accord with what your opinion is. So that may I said to I love people who can do things. Today then, we want to bless all of the people in our community who can and do do things. Who put their love into action and regularly go the extra mile to give sacred service in our community. And thank God I don't have to dip my finger in a pail of milk to get them to do so. Often they work behind the scenes, and so we only see the, the outcome of their loving labors. So in honoring all who serve, we want to recognize four people this morning who have not only gone the extra mile, but who have, gone, who have done so for a very, very long time. They are Ms. Grace Brown, Ms. Mary Brown, and Ms. Yvonne Carty for long service to our Ministry of Goodwill in the area of ushering. And Mr. Norman Wright, who has served for 25 years on our Board of Trustees. I'd like to invite practitioner Carol Charlton, who coordinates the Usher's Corps, to come to the platform to make the first three presentations as I invite each of our honorees to come forward. Hi, Carol. Come on, side. And so first, I'm doing them in alphabetical order. So um, first up is um, Gracie Brown. <laughs> and I have a very short citation to read for her. Citation honor, honoring Ms. Grace Brown for long service to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, presented Sunday, March 4, 2018. 
Ms. Grace Brown has been a member of our spiritual community for some 35 years, and for over 15 years, she has been a part of the cater of ladies, welcoming every individual that crosses the threshold of our church on a Sunday morning. A bright and welcoming smile is indeed the first part of our Sunday message of encouragement to our members and visitors. Grace's charming smile has been a ray of sunshine that greets each person as she gently hands you the program and assists you to your seat. We will miss Grace in the forefront of our Sunday morning greeters, but her continued support for the team is something we can always count on. Thank you, Grace, for your service to our community. Just stay, just stay. You look good, so just stand there. Tandy. <laughs> Next up is Ms. Mary Brown. I've done you should Ah, there she is. Citation honoring Ms. Mary Brown for long service to Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, presented Sunday, March 4th, 2018. Ms. Mary Brown became a member of this church on June 8, 1986, nearly 32 years ago. She became an usher early in her spiritual journey as she felt she could make a difference by graciously putting our first time visitors and others at ease on a Sunday morning or at any other temple function. Mary never forgets her name and this along with her bright greeting always ensures that our visitors quickly move into the family category. They feel like one away. This award is just a token of our appreciation of the service you have provided over the years. Our gratitude, Mary, for your continued support in the future. That's certainly the right one for me. And now we probably have to dig Yvonne out the kitchen, tell you. Ms. Yvonne Carty. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Citation honor honoring Ms. Yvonne Carty for long service to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, presented Sunday, March 4th, 2018. There are persons among us who, once they have made up their minds to be part of a movement, are committed to serving just about any possible form of expression. Straightforward Yvonne is one of those persons. I know me right at our Reverend Anne. She has been an usher for many years and has since found other loving action ministries to offer her many talents. Her forthright salutations of welcome and willingness to be of assistance have helped to bring many visitors into our fold as regulars or members. We give thanks for the magnetic side of her personality. We love and appreciate you, Yvonne. Thanks for being part of our community. Stay, stay, stay. And now, the only man that is in the church has better looking than I. <laughs> I'm going to ask our vice president of the board, uh, Ms. Jennifer Williams, to do the honors here. And we have Mrs. Livingston. <laughs> I'm sorry. Always Jennifer Williams to me in my heart. Uh, Mr. Norman Wright, please come forward. <laughs> no. You're not allowed to kiss him before. <laughs> Citation honoring Mr. Norman Wright QC for long service to Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, presented Sunday, March 4, 2018. 
Mr. Norman Wright has been a member of Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living since 1989 and has served on our board of trustees since 1993 in the capacity of vice president, a remarkable 25 years of unbroken service. During this time, in addition to performing professional legal services, pro bono, I might add, Mr. Wright provided invaluable guidance and advice to our founder, Reverend Dr. Elmer Lumsden, as he helped to pilot us through the uncharted seas of our evolution as a church of religious science. Reverend Elmer regarded him as her right hand and seldom made a move without consulting him. She evidently took him at his word when he would say with a twinkle in his eyes, I am always right. <laughs> An erudite Queen's Council known for her, his perspicacity and wit, Norman embodies the principles of truth he learned at Dr. Elmer's feet and has over the years proudly proclaimed his beliefs as a practicing religious scientist. One outstanding example of his public stand on principle as a truth student was on the occasion of his brother's funeral service at Stella Maris Roman Catholic Church, when he based his eulogy on Ernest Holmes and Raymond Charles Barker's reading in Richer Living, which is titled, There is no death, and I will never die, for I am spirit. I was there, you could hear a pin drop in the church. <laughs> In recognizing this outstanding member of our spiritual community for his unswerving loyalty and dedication, we are not just paying tribute to one remarkable man, we are honoring all those upon whose shoulders we stand and who have been such shining examples of sacred service to our spiritual community. On behalf of our Board of Trustees, ministers, practitioners, and our entire spiritual family, we say as our beloved Dr. Elmer would have said, Norman, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we give God thanks for you. And I'm going to ask him to say a few words. You never give a lawyer a microphone, but I'm making an exception. To say a few words in response on behalf of the awardees this morning. Well, good morning to you all. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to recognize the person at the time, but I'll take, I'll take his word for it. <clears throat> it is for me, <clears throat> sorry, it is for me a pleasure to um, have been here from when I came. And I just want to share with you how I happened to come here. <clears throat> I studied in England and was away for about five years. And then I came back to Jamaica, by which time they had become uh, independent, and a lot of things had changed. So it meant getting back into the way of life here and so on. <clears throat> and one day I was reading the newspaper, and I saw a big ad which says, be alive, awake, and aware joyous and enthusiastic about life. And I think I saw it maybe two or even three times. And I said, this sounds very interesting. Be alive, awake, aware, joyous and enthusiastic about life. I said, I'm going to take this in. So I came, I saw, and I was conquered. <laughs> I came, saw, and I was conquered. <laughs> I found it a very interesting, a very um, desirable, and all the good things you can say about that. So I came to the first meeting when this was, and I never stopped, and I went through all the stages. As a matter of fact, about the same time, I think Warren Chensui was involved in um, TM. TM, yes, TM, and I found that TM was also a part of the activities here. So I was totally engulfed <clears throat> in all of this, and I still am. I enjoyed it. I think it has made a big difference in my life, and I'm happy that I have remained, and I have every intention of continuing to do so. 
the fact that I do not appear to be here as <laughs> often as I used to. Don't let that get in the way. But there are so many things I have learned because it made a lot of sense to me and I have practiced it and all that. Even the, the one to which um, Reverend John referred at um, there, there is no death and I will never die because I am spirit. I have used that so many times because I believe in it. I respect the teachings and the way they have been put out wherever I go. But I think I have a duty to myself to recognize and understand what this is all about. And if I don't agree with the way it is put, then I don't agree with it. But the one about be aware, aware that they, um, there's no death and I will never die because I'm spirit. Um, as a matter of fact, I put it in my little thing here to refer to it, and I, I'm referring to it. I believe in it, and there are other things in which I believe because they make sense. So I said to myself, I'm going to do the same as, um, I don't even remember what the fellow's name is, but he said I did it my way. Who <laughs> <laughs> sing that? Frank Sinatra, yes. I did it my way. And so that's what I have done. It must make sense to me. I must be able to look at it, examine it, and so on. And if you have never seen this, this is at page 27 <laughs> of, the, <laughs> of the richer living. Look at it and work it out. There is no death, and I will never die because I am spirit. And there are lots of others. So without dragging this thing out, it has been my pleasure. And may I just say, the fact that you don't see me as often as I used to be, is not an indication that I have lost interest or anything like that. There are different things that one does, and you still share with where you started out in the first place. So that has been my pleasure. I thank you all for this recognition. You will still see me around, not as often, but you will see me around. And I'm doing, as Frank Sinatra said, whatever it is, I, I, I do it my way. But I do it within the framework of the views expressed along the way. And that way, I feel that I am myself. Because down the road, I am the one who is going to have to answer to what I didn't do or to what I do. So thank you all for the recognition. I still intend, and I would like to remind our president that even if I'm not here as often, if you have, whether it is a legal problem or what have you, and I can be of assistance, please feel free to call me. Pro bono. Pro bono. <laughs> well, well. Yes. So that is it, my friends. Thank you all. And it has been a pleasure for me, and it, I'm sure it will still be a pleasure. So we'll see you from time to time. Thank okay? You. Thank you. Let's give them all a round of applause. Thank you, friends. Everybody. You come as an opportunity after you do that, and now you're turning them back. Thank you, folks. There's a charming story about a woman in the Bible who did it her way. This is the story of Rebecca. And Rebecca went to the well as the women of her time were wont to do, to draw water. I always have those wonderful 
pictures in my mind of the women, you know, with the earthenware jars on their, on their shoulders. And if the earthenware jars by themselves must weigh a ton. But anyway, she was at the well drawing water one evening um, as the day came to an end. And a stranger came up to her and asked her for a drink of water. So she, she took, took her earthenware jar off her shoulder and she offered him a drink. And then having quenched his thirst, she decided to water his camels because she thought they must be thirsty too. Now friends, w giving camels water is not the same as giving a dog. You know, if somebody's shih tzu comes by your house and they're thirsty, you can put a cup, you know, for the dog to drink. A camel, a thirsty camel can drink 20 gallons of water. And the stranger at the well had 10 camels. So let us do the math. 20 gallons for 10 camels equals 200 gallons. 200 gallons drawn with a five gallon jar would equal about 40 trips from the well. 40 trips at a conservative, say, three minutes each would equal two hours. No mean task. So what seemed like a simple offer of kindness would have taken Rebecca at least two hours to fulfill. So my friends, when we honor folks like Grace, Mary, Yvonne, and Norman for their years of service, we are honoring everyone who has given in so many ways, not just in single acts of service or kindness, that, but people who have taken many, many hours and indeed given many years of their time in service to our center and to our spiritual community. Sometimes we may take for granted all the effort that goes into the production of our weekly activities. I never forget before I, I, I became a, started studying for a practitioner and then of course got into studying for, for the ministry, uh, I just never gave it a thought about how every morning a, a program found its way into my hands. And then when I started coming regularly uh, to visit the office and I saw all the work that went into just producing a Sunday program, I thought, wow. And then we, you know, there are things like the flowers. This morning they're a wonderful fay. Uh, thank you. And the arranging of the chairs on a Sunday morning. You know, we take it for granted we come, the chairs are laid out in absolute symmetry to follow the curve. Don't put one of his chairs out of, out of alignment or you will hear from Minister of the Environment, Courtney Johnson. Um, and then there are the people who, who, who uh, give us our refreshments on a Sunday morning, the ushers who greet us. There is, there is Sean and there is Marshall o, um, You know, Marshall o or Sean hand you a, a, a parking ticket or whatever. It takes a lot of effort and time. And I just think it is wonderful that people do this from their, their love of this community and for the love of the teaching, as Norman said, that has put their feet on the path to, of truth from which you never stray, no matter where you go or, or what you are doing. Once you have been exposed to this teaching, it really transforms your way of thinking and your way of, your way of life. But there's an important lesson from Rebecca um, that I wanted to share with you this morning, and it is this. You can't walk the second mile until you have walked the first. Hear what I tell you? You can't walk the second mile before you have walked the first. She had to do that first task before she went on to do that great act of love of, of giving the animals water. And she started her service by first doing what she was asked, but she went beyond the call of duty to do even more. Don't you just love people who, you, you know, you ask them to do something and they go way beyond that and say, but I saw this to be done, or, or you know, this caught my eye, and I thought you might appreciate this. Sometimes if you don't even want it done, you have to say thank you, because it just shows initiative and, and diligence and their love of the thing that they're doing and their love of you. There is, there is a wonderful saying, and I think it's attributed to Satya Sai Baba, the, the, the Indian guru. Um, and it, and it is this, 
He said, the hands that serve are holier than the lips that pray. The hands that serve are holier than the lips that pray. Sometimes, you know, we can just pray, and yes, that's wonderful. But people who then put their shoulder to the wheel to help and to be of assistance are really, in fact, uttering a prayer of a different sort. It's, it's a kinesthetic prayer. It's a prayer in action. So I have an assignment for you. And the assignment is that this week, whenever you are served, because th that statement, the hands that serve are holier than the lips that pray, really means that when you serve someone, you are serving God. So your service is a prayer. And so this week, whenever anybody serves you, and you can start this morning when you're being handed your refreshments, just say in your heart, silently, your service is a prayer that glorifies God. Anybody who hands you anything or does anything for you this week, just say quietly to yourself, your service is a prayer that glorifies God. Can we say that my service is a prayer that glorifies God? My service is a prayer that glorifies God. Say to your neighbor, your service is a prayer that glorifies God. Your service, your service, your service is a prayer that glorifies God. Your service is a prayer that glorifies God. I said your neighbor, not the whole church, you know. But it's true, your service is a prayer that glorifies God. Say it this week in your heart as you are served and see how it makes not only you feel, but the person that you are blessing silently in your heart. Just watch and see, transform them and just lift them up to a, a greater recognition of their valid, valuable, and authentic worth as another human being. There's a story written by Leo Tolstoy about a cobbler, a poor cobbler, whose last son had died, leaving him alone in the world. And he was a pious man, and so he devoted his time when he wasn't working to reading about God. And one night, our cobbler dreamed that God told him he would visit him the very next day. And so the very next day, he arose at dawn, and he swept the house clean and had an unaccustomed and unscheduled bath and opened the door to welcome his divine guest. Soon, he saw an old man hobbling through the snow with great difficulty. He took the man in, inside and gave him a hot cup of hot soup to keep him warm and made him sit before the fire for a while. The old man thanked him and left. And then he saw an old lady selling apples and a small lad pinching them out of her basket from behind her back. You know how, we, uh, how children are. They were, she, he was stealing the apples. So our cobbler called the young man and, and you know, admonished him. And then he paid the, the old apple seller for the apples that um, the, the lad had stolen. Shortly after, along came a soldier's wife carrying a baby under her hip. And he took her in two and gave her food and gave the baby some clothes and warmed them up. So this happened throughout the day. He was busy helping people, uh, someone or the other. And he soon felt tired. So as evening fell, he fell asleep. And again, he dreamed he saw God. If you were Jamaican, they'd say, what happened, man? We wait the whole day for you. He said to God, I've been waiting all day. And the master said, I was expecting you, and the master said, I came. I came in the form of the old man, the woman selling apples, the soldier's wife and child. I even came in the little boy stealing apples. So you helped me by helping them. You remember the story in the Bible when Jesus asserts that whatever you do to the least of these, you do it to me? Isn't that true, that when you, when you do something for someone, you're actually worshiping God. You're actually doing something that glorifies God in your life and your affairs. In the Science of Mind textbook, my friends, there is a beautiful meditation on page 521 titled simply, I Serve. It's just five lines long, and I'd like to read each line and have you repeat it after me. 
I serve the world. I serve the world. In a half voice. I serve the world. In a whisper. I serve the world. In your heart. I wait upon the Lord within all men. I wait upon the Lord within all men. In a half voice. I wait upon the Lord within all men. In a whisper. I wait upon the Lord within all men. In your heart. I call forth glory from on high through the minds of all people. I call forth glory from on high through the minds of all people. In a half voice. I call forth glory from on high through the minds of all people. In a whisper. I call forth glory from on high through the minds of all people. In your heart. I obey the will of him who, who inhabits eternity. Together. I obey the will of him who inhabits eternity. In a half voice. I obey the will of him who inhabits eternity. In a whisper. I obey the will of him. In your heart. My Lord within commands and I obey. Together. My Lord within commands, and I obey. In a half voice. My Lord within commands, and I obey. In a whisper. My Lord within commands, and I obey. In your heart. <coughs> and finally, I do good to all people. Together. I do good to all people. In a half voice. I do good to all people in a whisper and in your heart. And so it is. Namaste, my friends.